Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Next month, the Bar Branch of the St. Louis Public Library will close for two weeks. But this isn't a cost-saving measure for the Library Branch, which sits right on the edge of Lafayette Square in the Gate District, nor is it vacation for its staff. Instead, it's a bold plan to transform the underutilized space into what the library calls its creative experience. And joining us today to discuss just what that means is Justin Strutman. He's the Chief Operating Officer for the St. Louis Public Library. Justin, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. Thank you. And we're also joined by Mary Meyer. She's the manager of digital library services at the St. Louis Public Library. Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. So, Justin, what you're doing at Bar next month is actually the library's second creative experience. So I figured how better to give us a sense of the second one than to talk about the first one. What even is a creative experience? Well, creative experience is a digital maker space where people can come in and utilize um, pro type equipment. We have the highest technologies available for people to do graphic design, um, various media des- design, uh, and audio design. We also have a sound room, which is extremely high quality. Um, a-, a sound room, is this something recording artists would yeah, use? Exactly. Um, people come in and use it for podcasts. Um, they use it for their musical endeavors. Um, Want to lay down some tracks, they can come in and do that. Um, We've actually had some people come in and um, use the space to teach themselves how to uh, play music. Hmm. So That's that's amazing. So that is at the Central Library. Mary, how long has that creative experience been in existence? It's been there since 2012. Okay. And how is it doing? I mean, is this something that, um, you know, people are queuing up to use? It is. As Justin mentioned, the recording room is probably our most popular thing we offer in creative experience. Patrons can make reservations a week in advance for two hours a day, and they book up very, very quickly. Okay. And so there's all these different tools. I mean, is this just one big room or what does the creative experience at the Central Library currently look like? It's one big room with four computer pods that are workstations where people can work collaboratively or individually on different creative projects. And then we have the recording room in there as well. Okay. Now, Justin, the St. Louis Public Library System um, has more than a dozen branches across the city. I'm wondering what made you choose the bar branch for the second creative experience? Well, the Bar Branch uh, sits in a unique uh, location in the city. It's very easy to get to. Um, We are planning on doing these installations in multiple locations throughout the city. This is just the first one that we wanted to try out, kind of our pilot. Um, But as it sits on 44 and Jefferson, it's very easy to get to. It's so close to multiple highways right there. Exactly. So we we wanted to to make sure that that was possible. It was also, uh, as you mentioned uh, in the opening, Um, We have a location there, the auditorium, that was just not being used by the community. So we thought, what better way to um, kind of reignite that space than to put in this high-tech uh, installation. You say there's an auditorium there. It's funny, I use that library all the time, and you just always kind of go straight up to mm-hmm. the second floor. You just get on those stairs and, and start walking. So the first floor had an auditorium it's space? It's right there. As soon as you walk in past the uh, the huge cement tortoise, uh, you'll see it. It's it's straight there. And, and we're going to make the space look really nice, too. Um, we're going to have um, some really nice lighting and some uh, some beautiful glass doors. So people should be able to see it, you know, as a... They won't just go upstairs after you change this up. It'll be a bright, shining de- beacon when they walk in, yeah. That sounds so cool. Now, Mary, I understand that this creative experience is going to be a little bit different than the one downtown, and that's you actually have a few additions going into this one. Tell us about what tools are going to be on offer. Yeah, we have a lot, lots of different exciting things coming up in this space. We'll have several 3D printers, a laser cutter, a large format printer available, and we'll also have a virtual reality station and a laser cutter. Okay, I, virtual reality station. I mean, you got to tell me, what does this even mean? Yeah, so we'll have a station set up where patrons can make 30 minute reservations at a time and try out virtual reality. They can put on the headset, feel fully immersed in a game or whatever experience they choose to try out. It's something really exciting about that space is we're, we're making it into a green room space so that 
when someone is actually using that, we'll be able to film them and then display that so that other people um, that are with that party can see what's going on, see what they're seeing, and it actually puts them into that space, that digital space. So all of this stuff sounds really cool. I have to say, though, as a middle-aged person, I would be vaguely terrified to begin to use some of this stuff. How do you get it so that library patrons, um, maybe not all of us are there on the technological cutting edge, are actually ready to use some of these exciting new tools you've got? So we offer lots of free workshops in the space that focus on the different software that we offer and how you can get started creating your digital projects. Something new we've recently begun offering is our Tech Connect programs, which are one-on-one technology assistance. So you can fill out a form on our website, set up an appointment with someone in creative experience, and they'll help you get started with your project and learn how to use the software. And we're also reaching out to community groups because we know that this space only works if people want to use it and they want to are able to use it, just as you said. So um, I know that uh, Mary and her team have already reached out with multiple folks on this, um, but we're always looking for other partners um, who want to come in and use the space in maybe a way that we never considered. We're talking to Justin Strutman. He's the Chief Operating Officer at St. Louis Public Library. We're also talking to Mary Meyer, who's the Manager of Digital Library Services. And we're talking about what's underfoot at the Bar Branch, um, which is going to be this new creative experience digital maker space that should be open by the end of February, I understand. Um, Justin, this is a very old library. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, that's got to come with some challenges when you're talking about this new kind of equipment. It's been a lot of fun. So this, this Are you speaking sarcastically <laughs> here? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, I enjoy it. Uh, but, but yeah, the challenges uh, abound uh, in that location. This, this location was built in 1906, um, which is six years prior to the construction of Central Library. Mm-hmm. Um, when we got into the space, we didn't actually have drawings of what was there. So this was an auditorium, as we mentioned, and there was a stage there. We thought that that was built up and foundation kind of up below that. Um, It wasn't until we really got in there and started demoing that we found new space. Um, There was nothing underneath. We were able to knock that down. And that's where we are now putting this virtual reality station and the sound room um, and and having them completely accessible. That was going to be a a huge challenge otherwise. So that might not have been possible if the building had been configured the way you originally thought it was. Yes. So you're sort of flying without a set of plans here. Well, we're <laughs> Originally, we're we, flying yeah, without we are, a set of plans. Yeah, we're adapting, and um, the, the laser cutter that we talked about um, is a late addition, and I was talking with our uh, HVAC contractor today, and he was a little surprised, but very excited about trying to get that uh, fit in because that does require special ventilation. Oh, okay, you can't let that get too hot is the idea, Mary? And it can release certain fumes and things like that depending on what material the laser is cutting. So this is quite a complication. When you guys first envisioned this project, did you realize the library was going to have to close in order to complete the construction on this? Yeah, we we thought there would be some closure. Um, As a matter of fact, part of what we're doing here, uh, we're very excited about this space, but we're also looking at the entire conventional library, um, the upstairs. Um, and, And we're doing some weeding. That's what we in the library world call taking out books that are not circulating, that people aren't interested in, um, so that folks can focus on um, what they are actually interested in. So it's more promoting a a more retail environment. Um, Face out is what we call that. Um, So people can see the books that are available and and be more excited about those. On one level, I, I really have to applaud what you're doing. I mean, it's great you're moving the library into the new century. I guess that we've already been in for two decades now. But you, you know what I mean. I mean, you're sort of out on the cutting edge. On the other hand, the, the part of me that loves just sort of chancing upon an obscure book, it feels kind of sad to think of, of these collections being cold. How do you sort of balance the need to provide the classic library function with also making sure you've got some of this stuff that's newer and maybe more in demand? Uh, that's the challenge. I mean, we're competing against all kinds of different um, options that folks have these days. So we believe that if a book, you know, a book sits on the shelf and doesn't go to anyone, is it really worth having? It's like the tree falling in the woods, right? 
Um, so we're trying to push that out there. Now, we're not necessarily getting rid of books. People can still, you know, we'll still have a vast collection. Um, people can still place holds. They can still pick them up at that location or other locations. This is just a, a, a way we feel is better for marketing to folks so they can have the experience of walking through, seeing something that interests them and, and pulling it right off the shelf. So instead, you might order one of these more obscure books and, and come pick it up in a couple days. That's, yes, that's okay. an option. Books aren't going away. Please <laughs> no, tell me that. Not, out of them. <laughs> we asked our listeners this morning um, which tools they found most useful at lo- local libraries. And Rochelle on our Facebook group page commented, there's an entire world of resource information for small businesses to tap into via the library. St. Louis County even has a librarian who will spend an hour with you to show you how to use some of the tools, which sounds like you're also doing in the city. Um, Rochelle writes, it can be very useful for small businesses in planning marketing campaigns and and reaching customers. And Rebecca, um, also on our Facebook group page, she told us that she finds her local library's resources related to grants especially important. She writes, it's super useful for nonprofits to use. I see both of you guys nodding. It sounds like you've got some tools here. People might be surprised that a library even offers. We do. We have a lot of online databases that you can access for free with your library card. That'll help you create your business plan from step one till the end. Um, That'll help you research your target market. We have a database called Demographics Now that's perfect for finding that kind of data. Um, Reference USA is another helpful resource we have for finding potential customers too for your products. And a program we have coming up in Creative Experience is creating your own logo. So any small business owners Mm -hmm. looking to develop that And is that something that's a software-based thing, or that's more like a a workshop that you'll be having? It'll be a workshop using some Adobe software. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I find myself also wondering this. It seems like the odds of four people all wanting to check out the same book at once might be slim compared to four people. Uh, Maybe they get off work at the exact same time. They're all coming in wanting to use the Adobe Creative Suite all at the same time. How do you manage the demand that um, has to be for some of these licenses and programs that you're offering? Sure. So in Creative Experience at the bar location, we'll have eight different computer workstations. So people could hop on those and access all the same software on each computer. And if those happen to be full, we could always make a reservation for them as soon as one becomes available. Do you see this mostly being something where people will walk in or would it be something where it would make more sense for people to try to book space ahead of time? For the recording room, I would definitely recommend booking space ahead of time. That seems like the really (laughs) popular thing. It is. And you can book ahead for the virtual reality station once we have that up and running as well. Um, But for the computers, walk-in basis is perfect. And one thing that we've done with the space um, in in the construction is trying to make it very flexible. So the the space can be moved around and used for workshops. It can be used for um, presentations. And then it can be used for just uh, individual work. Um, But we've also made it expandable. So eight, eight workstations is double what we have at the Creative Experience downtown. Um, but we have the capacity to, to even add, I, I believe, another four workstations um, just within weeks. Wow. So. so for a relatively small library branch, it seems like you're putting in some big capacity here. You must anticipate there's going to be demand for this. Yes, that's the hope. (laughs) Now, you guys are obviously putting a ton of work into making this happen. Just hearing about those construction headaches alone, I'm like, wow, there's been a lot going on in the bottom floor of the library that those of us on the top floor had no idea. I guess I'm wondering philosophically, um, what makes this project such a priority for the library district? So one of the initiatives of the library is um, kind of bridging the gap of uh, the digital divide. And we've been doing that, I think, really well with um, our high-speed internet that everyone has access to as soon as they walk in the doors or even in our parking lot. Um, We have all the computers um, that people can reserve, uh, Chromebooks, and we even check out hotspots. Mm -hmm. So that gets people kind of to that base level. This takes them to the next level. Um, This puts high-tech equipment at their fingertips that they can now you know, used to really create an experience um, because this is the future and we want everyone to be able to uh, be a part of that. And some of these licenses um, can cost an individual thousands of dollars a year. You're really kind of leveling the playing field a little bit for people who don't have that kind of money. Absolutely. Um, you did mention earlier in our conversation that you'd like to, or you do plan to bring these creative experiences to um, many other branches. How, what's the goal on this and what kind of timeline are we on for these creative experiences multiplying across the city? Well, I'll say everything's based on funding. Now, this creative experience installation um, was funded through grants. Um, We have corporate sponsors 
um, Bear and uh, Edward Jones for this one. Um, we're looking for others at a couple different locations. Um, Walnut Park is one that we'd love to do, love to see uh, a similar installation. Um, and then at two different locations, um, more of our regionals, our larger um, branches, we'd like to put in more of a training type facility so that people could go in and get actually certified in these um, higher technologies. Okay, so there's a lot underfoot. It sounds like um, private grants are going to be the key to this. Yes. So what's the timing for people who are hearing about all this? They're very excited about going in and getting their virtual reality goggles on, or they can't wait to record their next album. When is this going to be open to the public? Um, we're planning to open it in mid-February. Okay. So you've heard it here first, mid-February. Um, <laughs> it looks like Justin's saying maybe a little later. Mid to late. Mid to late. Okay. <laughs> Let's leave a little wiggle room in there. I think that's always important. Um, but what an exciting project. So uh, Mary Meyer, Manager of Digital Library Services at St. Louis Public Library. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And Justin Strutman, Chief Operating Officer at the St. Louis Public Library. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.